Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here from the Spinal Injury Project at Griffith University. I want to talk to you today about autonomic dysreflexia, what's happening in this medical condition. So autonomic dysreflexia is a, or can be, a serious medical condition often experienced by individuals with spinal cord injury, usually at or above the level of T6, so the thoracic level 6, at or above. Now what happens is that there ends up being an imbalance in the autonomic division of the nervous system. This is the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. So sympathetic fight or flight gets activated in times of fear, and parasympathetic gets activated in times of resting, relaxation, and digestion. Now, in 85% of cases, autonomic dysreflexia is initiated due to some issue at the bladder. Usually, it's an indwelling catheter, or some irritation at the bladder. It could be a urinary tract infection, or it could be an overfull bladder. In other cases, most other cases, it's usually happening due to some uh, issue in the bowel itself, some impaction, some distension. So usually bladder, bowel issues, so hollow organ issues. And what happens is that these structures send a sensory signal into the spinal cord that wants to go up to the brain so you go, oh, there's something happening at my bladder or something happening at my bowel. As that input goes into the spinal cord and A sends up to go to the brain, it gets stopped at the level of injury. So usually it's a complete injury and it stops. Now instead of going up to the brain, which it can't, it stimulates sympathetic neurons. Now these are the ones in red here, sympathetic fight or flight. When this system gets activated, it gets activated in times of fear to try and keep you alive. So the types of things the sympathetic nervous system does is your pupils dilate so you can see more around you. Your blood vessels in your skin constrict to push the blood to deeper parts like muscles so that you can fight, for example. It tells your airways to relax and open up. More oxygen, more oxygen means more energy to the muscles of your body, for example. Your heart rate increases because it delivers more oxygen. Again, more oxygen, more energy, right? So it's all things that make sense. It activates this fight or flight response. So when this gets stimulated by this uh, stimulus in the, in the uh, bladder, for example, it shoots out and goes to all those structures. The most important thing you need to remember here is it goes to those blood vessels tells those blood vessels to constrict. Now think about it, blood vessels in the skin constrict. If you've got a hose and the hose has a hollow inside to it and a particular diameter, if you put your thumb on the end of the hose and narrow the diameter, the water squirts out further. And the reason why is because you've increased the pressure in the hose. When you narrow the diameter, the water backs up, pressure goes up. Right? And so this is what's happening here in vasoconstriction. The blood vessels of the skin constrict and blood pressure goes up. This is actually the first sign is that increased blood pressure. Increased blood pressure. Now the thing is the body doesn't want this increased blood pressure. Luckily, our carotid arteries in our neck, they've got receptors for blood pressure. If it goes up, it picks it up and sends a signal to the brain and says, hey, blood pressure's gone up. We need to try and drop it somehow. Now, the brain goes, let's drop blood pressure. How can we do it? I know, if I slow the heart down, I'm gonna drop the blood pressure, right? If your heart rate goes up, blood pressure goes up. If your heart rate goes down, blood pressure goes down. How do we do that? Well, it goes to a nerve called the vagus nerve, which is part of our parasympathetic nervous system, and it's one of our cranial nerves. This vagus nerve, vagus means wanderer, because it just goes beyond the head and neck to all these, as you can see, it innovates all these different aspects of the body. The vagus nerve goes to the heart, and it tells the heart to slow down. So it slows the heart rate of the heart. So, what are some of the, you got increased blood pressure and decreased heart rate, also known as bradycardia. Two common symptoms. Now what else happens is that the brain goes, we've got overactivity of the sympathetic nervous system here, we need to stop it. So it tries to send a, an inhibitory signal down, 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 but it stops at the level of injury. So all we get is a rest and digest or parasympathetic signal above the level of injury and a fight or flight signal below the level of injury. And what that means is this, high blood pressure but slow heart rate. But other signs that we can get above the level of injury is, because you've got activation of all these other parasympathetic neurons, is the fifth nerve here, the, uh, the, sorry, the seventh cranial nerve here called the facial nerve, it actually tells the blood vessels in your face to dilate and relax. Because there's a constriction everywhere else that says we're gonna try and dilate as many blood vessels as possible. So the blood vessels in your face dilate and you get flushing. So flushing is another sign. Now because you've got blood vessels constricted throughout your body, 
but blood vessels in your head relaxing, you get a headache, right? Hypertension plus relaxed blood vessels, headache. Another common sign. Usually, the sympathetic nervous system controls sweating. That's why you sweat when you get stressed, about to do a presentation. But if it's not working properly, the parasympathetic system takes over. And so in this case, you get sweating as well because the parasympathetic nervous system is taking over. And these are some of the most common signs that you're going to see. Now, why are they happening? Below the level of injury, right? Below the level of injury, you got sympathetic nervous system activation. Above the level of injury, you got parasympathetic nervous system activation. And this is what's happening in autonomic dysreflexia.